Hello, and welcome back to another Visionaire tutorial series, The Scenic Route. As the name implies, all tutorials in this series will be about scenes in Visionaire. In this tutorial, we will be adding a way system to an existing scene. Way systems are made up of two parts, way borders and way points. Way borders are a set of lines that the player character can't cross. This can be used to define an area that the player can walk within or an area they are prevented from entering. Waypoints, on the other hand, are points that act as landmarks within the scene. How those points are connected together will act as a path that guides the character around obstacles within the scene. In order to complete this tutorial, you will need all of the game assets created in the New Game Essentials series, including an existing scene that you want to add the way system to, a player character that is already placed in that scene, and a mouse interface attached to the player character. So with that in mind, let's get started. In Visionaire, go to the Scenes tab and select your scene. Then within the Scenes tab, go to the Way Systems. And here you'll notice that there is a preview of your scene and a section over here which shows Way Systems and Action Areas. Now select Way Systems so that when we add a new entry it will create a Way System. So if we click the plus sign, it will now create a Way System and if it didn't automatically expand, hit the little triangle to expand it for yourself there. Now notice, again, by default, Visionaire called the asset Way System 0. So let's give that a better name. Rename that just to Main. And this will be the main way, way system within this scene. You can have multiple way systems, and we'll talk about that in a future video. First, let's select Way Borders. Again, this is, these are the lines that you lay down to prevent the character from crossing it. So it's like putting up walls or fencing around your scene so that the player character can't cross it. So let's start way up here. Way Borders are usually quite easy to put down because your scene itself as you can see with mine here, it has edging that's already there that dictate the areas that the player shouldn't cross. So it's often very easy and quick to put down a border. So I'm going to start way up here in the top area of the floor. I'll click left with the left mouse button once and then just move down. I d I'm not dragging, I just click once and then move my mouse to the next spot and click again. And then I just keep clicking until I outline the area that I think should be the area that the player character can walk in. Now if there's a spot that you get to where you want a very straight line, hold down the shift key and move your mouse along. You notice I can move the mouse anywhere upwards here and it stays straight. So I get a nice straight line there. Now with the sign, I'm going to, in, in a future video, show you how to make that the player walk behind this sign. For now, I'm going to imagine as if the character could walk behind the sign, and I'm going to draw a border so that it looks to me like that would be the edge of where the sign is at that would prevent the player character from walking into it. So I'm just going to put it here for now and I'll adjust these lines because they're not quite right. But I've, I'm putting down a set of points that 
basically give me the number of points that I want. And then I'm going to adjust. Now when you come to settle your final point, you can lay it right over the top of your first point of your border. And when you notice you place the cursor over the top of the closing point, you have a little green check mark, and that shows that you're actually going to close the border. And when you do that, you notice that the border lights up a little bit brighter. Okay, now let's make adjustments. Uh, we can move our mouse over the top of a point, and if we drag it, if we left click, we can drag it along there. And I'm just going to tweak these things around a little bit because I know that my edging isn't quite right, but I just need to tweak it a little bit here or there. So that should be good enough. Now, if for instance you thought, oh, it may have been good to put an extra point here, you can do that. You can move your mouse to the spot in the line where you'd like a new point and just left click and it will add the point. If you want to remove a point, move your mouse over the top of the node, select it by left clicking and then press the delete key and that will remove it. What will happen when you remove a point, we'll just show you here, I'll add one, I'll move it out some so that now it's much more angular, but when I delete it, it makes a straight line between the two remaining points that were part of that line. Okay, this adds in a bit of a border, a way border, and you try and get it so that the lines seem like they are lining up with the perspective of the room to follow the areas that don't actually have walls, for instance, in front of this stove. It's a little difficult because you have to imagine what it is. So what I'm trying to do is follow the line here of my floor. And fortunately with my floor here, it has uh, checkers basically, it's got squares. So I've got a bit of an edge that I can kind of follow. So I'm just gonna try and tweak it so that it kind of looks like it's going to follow that edge. Uh, of and the flow of that um, those lines for perspective. Okay, let's give this a try and see how our player character now works. I'm going to do a save and run. So now let's give the borders a test. If I click anywhere within the scene, he's able to walk around and if I try to click outside of the scene, he won't move past into those borders. So even down here where the scene, the border juts out around the stove or within the sign, he won't move to stand on top of it or anywhere is above the uh, borderline that we had put in. However, he can walk anywhere is within the scene. Now, there may be a spot down here. The way the movement system works is if you click anywhere within the scene and there's a direct line of sight from the, uh, the beginning to the end, the destination, then he'll automatically move there. However, if he's in a place and you click somewhere that would cross a border and we click, he won't move to there because the direct line of sight is blocked by a border line. Let's uh, set up some waypoints so that it will help guide him along so that he knows they're kind of like breadcrumbs to tell him how he can get around obstacles. So let's do that. Let's click on waypoints and then we'll just add some because this is where he was having trouble. Let's add our first one there 
and then we'll just add a couple around here to get to there. Let's see how that works. Save and run. Now, if I go down here, even though direct line of sight would be blocked by a border, if I click here, he's able to walk out and around. All right. Now, you may have to uh, do some testing around within your scene to see if there's any other areas that need this. There's one more thing that you may notice, and we'll adjust this here as well. When he's standing in front of the door, he's this tall. When he's way back here in the corner, he's the same height, and he shouldn't be. According to perspective, he should only be, oh, roughly around this tall, somewhere around the bottom of his hat. So let's go in and fix that. If you notice down at the bottom here under character size tab, there is a few settings. There's the character for preview, which we're able to pick our cook to preview. So if I move him out on the scene, we can see what his height will be at any place within the scene I drag him around to. I don't even have to hold down the, the mouse, I'm just moving the mouse around. Now, this here, there's a character size. Now that's geared to each one of these types of points within the waypoint system. Now I could attach a size to a waypoint maybe here and then add some more waypoints until I get up here, but there's a little bit better way of doing it than that. What we can do is we can create a second set of waypoints and we do this by holding down the control key and then clicking. And that will set, reset the points that I am trying to select and then I can click once to start my new set and click a second time to create kind of like a meter on the side. What we're going to do is I'm just going to select the first one and it's, it's in line with the outside of my upper part of my way border. And the lower one is far down. Now what I can do is I can nudge this even further down, just like way borders, way points, you can use the arrow keys to nudge around little bit by little bit. So I'm gonna nudge that down. And what I'm going to do is this down this far, I want him at 100%. So I'm going to set this at 100% for character size. And then I want up here where he will be in line here. I want that set somewhere around, um, I'd say around 65, let's say. All right, that looks about good. So now when I drag him, around my cook character to preview him in different areas, we can see that his scaling changes. Let's give it a try. In runtime, we'll just save and run, and then we'll move him along within the scene. And as you can see, he adjusts as he walks along. All right, and the waypoints for the other areas are just acts fine. He can walk to any place within the scene right now. I'll take the preview off here. The reason why we place a second set of points on the outside is because it allows us to have these points in a given area. It's also outside of the way border, so it doesn't affect where the, the uh, characters walk. Uh, but they're all those scaling points are always in one place that you can just go to. If you had a, a complicated scene with many waypoints through it, it's difficult to remember which point you had set the scaling on. And 
The system doesn't work well if you have a multitude of scaling points. It may get confused. You may end up having uh, fluctuations in the scaling, so much so that it doesn't look realistic anymore, uh, the transition for the scale. So I hope that uh, this was useful, and this concludes this tutorial on Way Systems. Hope to see you in the next.